A lot of my life, I have always said that the universe likes to keep me on my toes, and when it came to recovering from a relatively routine tonsillectomy, the universe did just that. Of course, it would be me that would need to get emergency surgery a few hours out of coming out of surgery to stop a profuse bleeding because that's just my luck. <laughs> yeah, let's just get into it. The night before surgery, I drove up to my parents' house since I was gonna be having my surgery within a few miles of their house and I was just gonna stay there with them afterwards because my mom is a stay-at-home mom and could kind of be around to help me out a little bit more afterwards. Bailey happened to be very excited because she absolutely loves my parents. Funny enough, when we actually turn onto the street, she knows that their house is there and when I opened up my car door, she just came sprinting out and went all the way up to the front door by herself. She was just like, I love these people, I know these people, these are my grandparents. So she she loves grandma's house. Good morning. Um, <laughs> it is the morning of my surgery and honestly, I'm very cranky, I'm hungry. I'm very, very hungry. Um, I kind of ate like a weird dinner last night which left me hungry at about like 11 p.m. at night and I didn't want to wake up my family by making a whole meal. So I didn't, um, and now I'm just starving. I'm a little cranky right now, to be honest with you. They called me yesterday, like, don't put on any, you know, lotions or creams or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, because you probably want to tape stuff to my face for my tonsillectomy, but um, I'm not letting you clog my pores with surgical tape because I'm already kind of having a little bit of a skin situation from being stressed. I'm not gonna make it worse with getting like pimples like that because that stuff breaks out my skin. My surgery's not even for another four hours, so it should just be nice and absorbed to, to my skin, but it's not gonna cause this tape to break me out, hopefully. That's what we're hoping for. By the way, because I know that there's gonna be someone in the comments that are like, why did you go up against your doctor's orders? It was face lotion, I was gonna put it on. I didn't care. <laughs> And it didn't affect anything, by the way. Everything was totally good. That's not why I had to get emergency surgery. What are you doing? You look like you're falling asleep. You good? Oh, there she is. Hi, Bailey. No, what are you doing? You're just sitting in the middle of the living room. What's up with that? That morning, so that way I kind of gave myself something to do, but also because I forgot Bailey's crate, I took her to Petco. Bailey, you see the piggies? You see the piggies. What do you think? <laughs> Are you happy? Bailey. Okay, so I found them and, uh, okay, that's gonna hurt. You're in the parking lot and you just got in the car. And mommy got you a frozen treat so you can eat it while mommy eats her frozen treats. Do you like that? We can be frozen treat buddies. Pretty soon after I got home though, it was time to head over for the surgery. We're headed over, I'm cranky about it. <laughs> I'm really cranky right now to be honest with you. This is my lovely IV that I have to have that I absolutely hate having IVs. All right, so I'm back in here. This is my last little bit of talking and I have like five blankets on. Coming back home, I was doing good. Whatever they used on me, definitely I woke up and just felt like I had woken up in the morning. So um, coming out, I felt great. They did tell me to be on a general vocal rest, but he said, I do understand that you're probably gonna have some like talking, just try not to talk a lot. I'm home, I just took a shower. They said not to shower, <laughs> but I didn't. I also decided to do some skincare because some areas around my lips felt like I had had surgical tape on that and um, I wasn't about to get pimples from that. About an hour or two later, I noticed I had started to spit up a little bit of um, the red life juice that we all have within us. <laughs> they did say some of that was normal. It's almost like if you didn't floss your teeth for a while or you go to the dentist and you have that person who flosses your teeth too aggressively, that that would be normal. It was slightly more than this, which was a little alarming, but I kept my eye on it. I also felt well enough to eat one of those icy things because my throat was hurting, so I did that. And of course, since I was getting a little frozen treat, I got Bailey her frozen treats that I had bought her at Petco that morning. All was not well though, the life juice, the red life juice that we all have within us um, started to become a lot more prevalent in my spit and it started to feel like I had to spit to not inhale it. Um, so it kind of went beyond a point of like, let's keep an eye on this because just slightly more to like, 
I'm concerned. <laughs> I just want the doctor because it keeps spitting up red life juice. Claude, the doctor said it isn't concerning, but to keep an eye on it, he said I sound a lot better than um, a lot of the other patients he gets. Um, but I just was talking and I hadn't been talking in a while. And it's just like my voice is going so fast right now. At this point, I'm gonna blur it out, but my doctor advised um, so that way I can kind of treat track of how much it was to have a cup next to me that I would spit into when I had that red life juice fill up my mouth and throat. So that way we can kind of track how much was in there. So I'm gonna blur this out because it kind of shows in this shot. Hello, you just gave mom some wawas. No, we're watching TV, I'm not doing much. Hold on, I wanna show that. <laughs> what do you think, baby? I also got my mom and my brother here. Unfortunately, and I was trying not to spit as much as possible, there was a combination of spitting and swallowing that's gonna get taken out of context. Um, red life juice, it's for the red life juice. I think it had been about a cup at that point that had been fully filled up in the course of like, I'd say like an hour 15 to an hour 30. I called my doctor and I had these giant clots on the back of my throat that uh, my mom says they were about the size of those Whoppers candies. Um, so the doctor was like, go to the emergency room, have them check it out. So back to me being clumsy, I had to take my cup with me and I rinsed it out before I started to go. I had to take the cup with me because I couldn't make it through a 10 minute drive over to the emergency room. And when I got out, just me being clumsy, I tripped over my own feet. I'm used to my car, which is so much lower. My mom's car is so much higher, so I wasn't thinking. And I tripped and spilt it on myself and my mom's car. I'm sorry, mom, because she ended up cleaning it up because I was like, super out of it after this. But um, I ended up doing that and the nurses at the ER, they're like, check you in and whatever, whatever that staff is called. I think they were nurses, was like, uh, we need to get your blood pressure. Oh my gosh, what's going, okay, we're gonna get you back into your room ASAP. Uh, I'm in the ER. So I was maybe in the waiting room for 10 minutes before they brought me back to a room. There was people in that ER that were waiting a lot longer than I was, but um, I got priority. But um, almost immediately when I went back, uh, I'm laughing because I don't know how to cope. <laughs> the doctor takes me, and I'm gonna use Bailey for this. It's like, open your mouth. Wait, Bailey, can you open your mouth? Okay, open your mouth. I go like, you know, I open my mouth, and he shines light back there. He's like, uh, we got a call. Redacted, my doctor's name. And I was kind of started to freak out at that point. Oh, I have to go back in for surgery for my quick Yeah. All right, it's 10.47 at night. We're here for round two. Anywho, so that night I was rushed in for emergency surgery. I got my stomach pumped. They pulled over a cup of red life juice out of me. I definitely would find out later that it had gone through my digestive tract too, in addition to what I was spitting up. You know, my whole life I never thought I would get my stomach pumped. It was something that I more believed happened, you know, the majority of the time if you drink too much, and I was like, I know my limits. But um, yeah, now that I've had my stomach pumped, I never want to do that again. That was horrible. But the worst of it was arguably yet to come. It's the next morning, and I can't talk, but I'm alive, lol. The next day, I believe that would be Sunday. Um, yeah, things weren't good. Before I get into this, I do wanna say that I asked my mom not to tell Graham what was going on because his dad had already scheduled a visit out here before my surgery was scheduled and I wanted him to be able to enjoy that time and I didn't tell Graham what was going on. I think if he knew, he would've come immediately. But um, I was very violently ill the next morning. It was really, really bad. We tried Pepto-Bismol just to get it down, but um, as soon as it swallowed, it was just 
right back up. Uh, I didn't feel up to vlogging. <laughs> I don't think you guys would have wanted to see the footage. The next day was Valentine's Day and I actually ate a lot more. I was feeling a lot better. I was definitely on the up and up. I was still having stomach problems, but yeah, I wasn't getting sick, so that was good. I did vlog the day and put it up. And here's like a little bit of footage from there. All right, here's my dinner. Super cheap pasta. It's a new food for me since all this, so I'm excited. So the next day I was doing like 30 to 40 percent normal. I think the fatigue really got to me, so I'd have energy for like 15 to 30 minutes max, and then I would feel just completely out of it for the next like six to eight hours. So I didn't get any work done. We did work this day on getting the color out of my hair, so that way we could get it to this brown. And there's a video on that. All right, so it's the next morning. I'm feeling eh, kind of the same as yesterday. I usually feel pretty bad in the mornings though, um, but we are putting coconut oil in my hair. Try to help remove my hair dye. Yay. <laughs> I'm doing another coconut oil. You guys missed a few washes because I wasn't feeling good and didn't document it, but we're making good progress. I'm still struggling with food. Um, today I ate like spaghetti. Oh my gosh, my hair looks so white up front. I kind of like the white hair look. Um, anyways, uh, so I'm still struggling with food. So I think, um, because we were gonna do, I ate spaghetti and pasta last night and just like my throat feels so rough from even trying to do that today. It was like chewing the heck out of that garlic bread. It was very soft, it was not toasty. It's still a little bit too much. So my mom is making me my favorite soup. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, I have a lot of energy right now too and I shouldn't be moving around a whole bunch. And I just wanna talk because I haven't been able to talk for like three or four days now. And so all I want to do is talk, and my mom has to keep reminding me to stop talk. Stop talk, good English. And we got Bailey. So we are round twoing this mother hecker. The day after that, I was actually, um, I was relatively normal. There's not really that much to report there. It was exciting to feel like I had more energy, but I still just, I would be good for maybe, let's say 45 minutes this day because I'd gotten more food myself and then I would feel really fatigued for like four to five hours. So I was doing better, but I wasn't great. As soon as I got back to Vegas, I was so excited to be around Graham and I was so excited to be around everybody, but I was still fatiguing pretty fast. But yeah, I feel pretty good. We just drove, that was pretty much it. And then uh, the day after, I mustered up all of my energy and went to Area 15 with my mom and my brother and Graham. I had been planning it since before my surgery, so um, I was going. <laughs> and it was pretty cool. We did Wink World, we did Museum Fiasco, Lift Off, Birdly, and then finally we had dinner at The Beast. After that day, I was super fatigued and um, yeah, it just, the fatigue is real. At this point, I would say I'm like 95% normal. I think the only thing that's kind of an issue now is that my iron is low. I'd already felt like it was low before this, but I've noticed a lot of the times when I'm standing up now, I'm getting very dizzy. I think it's just low. I don't think I'm fully anemic or anything. Yeah, that's pretty much my recovery at this point. I'm 95% normal. If you want to get up to five free stocks, there is a Moomoo link in the description where you can do that. I also have an express. VPN where you can get up to a month of VPN for free with purchase so you should definitely check that out. Subscribe if you watch to this point in the video um, especially if you want to see the making Starbucks at home but is it cheaper? <laughs> and that's not gonna be the title but we're gonna be trying to make Starbucks drinks from home and seeing if it's cheaper so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. Comment down below let me know have you gotten your tonsils out? What was your experience? Did you have to get emergency surgery too or is it just me? <laughs> and with that said don't forget to end